<laughs> the third and final day of the World Meeting of Families Congress in Dublin was held this morning. Twenty conferences or breakout sessions, along with the official closing ceremony of the event, have concluded this grand event of families for families. Now everything is ready to welcome the Holy Father when he arrives in Dublin. <laughs> the main conference of the day should have been given by Cardinal O'Malley, Archbishop of Boston and President of the Pontifical Commission for the Fight Against Pederasty in the Church. Cardinal O'Malley was unable to attend the Congress because of some problems in his archdiocese. In this panel, Marie Collins, a victim of abuse and former member of the Pontifical Commission for the Protection of Minors, gave her testimony. Panel 1, dedicated to the celebration of the Lord's Day as a family, was moderated by Colette Furlong. What if we toyed with the liturgical season, the colors, the imagery, and remembrance of events? Imagine using the resources that exist to help both parent and child, in a sense, prepare for what's on the menu on a given Sunday and through this type of family Lexio Divina, whet their appetites so that when the word is proclaimed and reflected on and sung about throughout the liturgy, the family can identify with it to some degree, she said. Salvatore Martinez, president of the Renovamento Nello Spirito Santo from Italy, said that the spirit is made present in the family through prayer, allowing God to visit us in our homes every day. There is no better and effective way than to pray and pray together. When the family prays, it is vigilant, prophetic, in love, incarnated in communion. The unity of a people and of a nation is above all a spiritual fact. Nothing more than prayer is an antidote to loneliness, to social exclusion, and to many intergenerational conflicts to which we are witnesses, and which unfortunately have their origin within our homes. Relationship and sexual education in the light of Amoris Laetitia is the subject of panel two. Bishop Dennis Nolte from Ireland remembered that the Second Vatican Council spoke of positive and prudent sex education, with due weight being given to the advances in psychological, pedagogical, and didactic sciences. It seems to me that Pope Francis is suggesting this education be rooted in the family and not in schools. Parents are invited to take their responsibility as first educators seriously and schools are reminded that they must work with and not against the family. A school is there to support parents, to affirm the family. About the same item, Valerie and Privat Ternink from Mother of Mercy Association spoke. Valerie said, Intelligence is the instrument of discernment over acts with regard to what is good and free. It is necessary today to know intellectually the different degrees of maturity in love to avoid traps and dead ends, and thus be able to commit oneself forever. The Republic of Ireland has a prison population of approximately 4,000 people. Families impacted by imprisonment are described as the hidden victims of the criminal justice system. This is because families often suffer negative consequences as a result of their family member being in prison. This workshop facilitated by prison chaplains explained the impact of imprisonment on families. With Synod McNeela, Imelda Wickham, Ruth Comerford, Mary Hanaram, Christine Hochter, Joe O'Rourke, Brenda Coleman, Larry DeClaire, and Cathal Duddy. Ignacio Socias of the International Federation for Family Development from Spain spoke about domestic violence. For him, based on the principle of subsidiarity, the most adequate and efficient way to establish the role of the state should consider three types of domestic situations to prevent violence. Households where family links are stable and solid. The state should respect their autonomy and avoid any interference. Households with families in situations of vulnerability, single parents and migrants, etc., should be supported with family responsive policies. Households that have failed to establish family links or have broken them would require different types of intervention. Also this morning, there was a workshop to present the Santa Teresa Group. It is an initiative of the Archdiocese of Toledo, Spain, to accompany women who have suffered a divorce. 
Several women in this group gave their testimony. The first session of the morning ended with two presentations. The first one entitled Accompanying, Discerning and Integrating, Human Fragility and Amoris Laetitia was led by Cardinal Walter Bassetti, Archbishop of Perugia Citta della Pieve and President of the Italian Episcopal Conference. The second was again the protagonist, Father Leo Padalinghug, who returned to give a cooking demonstration. Monsignor Robert E. Barron, Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, spoke about Pope Francis on the Gospel of the Family, what is Jesus calling our families to be? For him, what should be clear is that the formation of virtue is never an entirely positive process. Indeed, it often involves punishment, correction, and the pointing out of faults. No pianist can ever become a great player without being corrected, even sharply so, and no soccer player ever became a master of his game without enduring the harsh interventions of some tough coaches. And therefore, within the school of virtue, which is the family, something like tough love ought to obtain. Children who are lovingly corrected feel cared for. They perceive that they are individuals whose potential is recognized. <laughs> Several representatives of important technology companies, coordinated by the journalist Eileen Dunn, spoke about the problems that can be generated in the family by the addiction to new technologies. The second major panel of the afternoon had the title, Dancing to the Future with Hope, Strengthening Marriage and the Family Today. The moderator was Dr. Gabriella Gambino, Under Secretary of the Dicastery for Laity, Family, and Life. In ancient times, said Dr. Gambino, the sacramentum was the military seal engraved with fire in the soldier's hand, indicating that he belonged to the army and could never leave. In an analogous way, marriage carries with it the sign of God, a sign of His grace, of the strength He gives us, of His mercy as the eternal possibility of forgiveness between spouses. Learning to forgive oneself from the first years of marriage means discovering that one is building on the rock, on a love that will never end, capable of overcoming all human weaknesses, and this is the true foundation of our hope. In the same panel, Brenda and Brendan Conroy from Ireland spoke. For them, in the kind of climate where being people of faith is only tolerated so long as it's a private little matter that is confined behind the closed doors of our homes and churches, the temptation to retreat from society and to do our dancing in private will be huge. And it is a temptation that is only going to grow and grow in the short term. The understandably attractive temptation to retreat is one that we are called upon to resist. We would like to propose a different model of dancing to the future with hope. In the words of Pope John Paul II, in his address to the young people in Galway, something more is needed. Wendy Grace, Managing Director at Compass Communications, was the moderator for the panel entitled, The Family That Prays Together, Finding Time for Prayer in a Digital Age. She said that, in order for you to pray as a family, first you have to make sure you have your own solid relationship with God. Perhaps you can have a rule of quiet time on your commute, read the daily gospel, or listen to apps like Sacred Space, or pray as you go. You can set alarms on your phone to remind you to take time out, to take stock, to pray. Monsignor Carlos Simon of the Dicastery for Laity, Family, and Life was the moderator of the panel dedicated to the role of family associations today. For Monsignor Simon, associationism helps, does not substitute or annul what the family develops. It complements, it encourages, it pushes, but it never substitutes or it is put to the margin of the family. In summary, family associationism contributes to the family being more family. And in these three fields mentioned a moment ago, families can be more associates. Perhaps the most developed field today is charitable and catechetical. It will therefore be necessary to encourage liturgical celebration. In the same panel spoke Professor Francesco Belletti of the International Center for Family Studies from Italy. For Professor Belletti, the big question is how to hook the vast majority of families who remain without connections with the outside. Also, because often this apparent autonomy, which is isolation, becomes the first and most important cause of vulnerability. 
because no family is more fragile than the one that cannot even think of how to find help, collaboration, and support abroad. Associated families have understood that being together is a precious treasure. How can we make this treasure accessible to as many families as possible? Dr. Carl Anderson, Supreme Knight of the Knights of Columbus from the United States, was the moderator of the panel dedicated to the family as an agent of peace in a turbulent world. Dr. Anderson remembered that writing in Familiaris Consortio, St. John Paul II observes, the essence and role of the family are in the final analysis specified by love. Hence, the family has the mission to guard, reveal, and communicate love. Every particular task of the family is an expressive and concrete actuation of that fundamental mission. He suggests that in analyzing the tasks of the family, we make love both our point of departure and our constant reference point. The importance of the family for ecumenism was studied in panel four. The moderator was Bishop Brian Farrell, secretary of the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity. Among the participants in this panel were Nadia and Tony Fraga of the Truro Anglican Church from the United States. For them, God takes our imperfect home, our imperfect kids, our imperfect lives, and he shows us how to be available to others by including them in the regularity of our day-to-day -day life. We are learning to love as Jesus loved, and that simply requires a willingness to see our small acts as something Jesus wants us to do and invites us to freely participate in. Panel 5 was an interactive workshop on the use of the scriptures through Lexio Divina to help hope and healing in our lives, especially in our families. The moderator was Professor Seamus O'Connell, among others. Finally, a new presentation of cuisine by the American priest Leo Patalinghog. <laughs> the afternoon's keynote speech was presented by Cardinal Mario Zanari, Apostolic Nuncio de Syria. He spoke about the family as a key to peace in a turbulent world. Cardinal Zanari spoke about his experience during the war in Syria. He remembered that about half of the population was forced to leave their homes, villages, and neighborhoods. 6.1 million internally displaced persons and 5.6 million refugees in neighboring countries. Syrian refugees make up a quarter of all refugees in the world. It has been an impressive mass exodus like that of Aleppo Est in December 2016, with about 200,000 people displaced under the snow, or that of the Eastern Ghouta in April with 158,000 refugees, an unstoppable stream of human suffering, scenes that occur in various parts of the world, such as Myanmar, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, South Sudan, and elsewhere. After him, a group of families from different parts of the world with conflicts gave their testimony of love to the Lord and perseverance in the faith in the midst of persecution and suffering. Once the testimonies were finished, the celebration of Holy Mass took place in the main arena. It was presided over by Cardinal Kevin Farrell, Prefect of the Dicastery for Laity, Family, and Life. In his homily, he presented the family as hope for the Church and for the world. In his homily, Cardinal Farrell said that today there are many opinions and many ideologies that are contrary to the Christian vision of family. But as the Latin said, contra facta non vale argumentum, you cannot argue with the facts. This is especially true about the family. The serenity, the inner joy, and the personal security that the family gives are the factum. This is an undeniable reality against which no intellectual sophistry can argue. Those lucky enough to meet families firmly founded on the rock of faith and Christian love can immediately perceive the charm of this unique form of shared life. 